Welcome to the People Connect Podcast. Your network is your net worth. Are you ready to take your life to the next level? Be prepared to leap out of your comfort zone and connect with the who's who of what you want to do. Stop, drop, and roll as we start, market, and grow the CEO of you and your host, Nichelle Womack. She will help you engage, reinvent, motivate, and reactivate your plans for success. Hey everybody, good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening. I'm doing a duel today. I'm so excited for myself. I'm doing two broadcasts at one time. Welcome to each and every one of you. I am Nichelle with To Excel with Nichelle. I bring you information, inspiration, and motivation to help you start market and grow into the CEO of you. And I do that by tapping into your strengths identifying your weaknesses, maximizing, helping you to maximize your opportunities. Hey, Pastor Monique, and to help you to devour those threats. Welcome. Hey, Amber, what's going on, lady? Thank you all so much for coming in today. I greatly appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for all the love and all of the share. Now, today, it was in my spirit and my heart that I bring to you some information from the Most High. Hey, how you doing, Amber? Are you like my hair, Amber? You know, Amber, I change it up. This is a bad hair day hair. So thank you so much. I greatly appreciate you. Hey, Pastor Monique. So thank you so much for uh, inviting your followers in. I greatly appreciate that as well. I pray that each one of you had an amazing day. Thank you so much for the love popping it in. To all my replay viewers, thank you so much for coming in as well. I greatly appreciate you too. And I greatly appreciate you sharing the broadcast. If you like what you hear and you are not connected with, with me, there is a link in my bio where you can connect and you can draw all of the energy that I have for me to you to help you prosper in your life to that next level. Um, if credentials are important to you, I am a, I have a BA, I have an MBA. I also have 30 plus hours in mental health. I'm currently pursuing a PhD right now. Hopefully, I'll be finished with that soon. I'm in the dissertation stage, so whenever I can just put my mind to the paper and get that finished, then it'll be finished, and as long as it get approved, yay. And then outside of that, I'm a certified life coach and business coach, and so I really enjoy helping people to manifest the blessings that God gave you in your purpose to help you identify what you need to do to take your life to the next level in your business, your life, and your relationship. That is why I live stream on a regular basis. Um, because God has been good to me and the word of God says to whom much is given, much is required. And in that requirement, I know God wants me to use my voice. And I promise you in your purpose, because everybody has a purpose, God wants you to use your purpose too. to so whatever manifestation that you want to increase in, God will deliver that increase for you. If you believe in him, if you trust him, if you speak his word in his language, if you confess his faith, he will deliver your purpose to you so that you can manifest in it. So I want you to believe that. I'm also on Instagram and on Twitter at Nichelle Womack. So feel free to join me on any platform that you feel connected where um, we can touch bases with one another. So I'm going to go ahead and get into business because last night my other friend came on. He was like, Nichelle, you were on so late. <laughs> but he's an hour. He was an hour ahead of us. So I'm Central Standard Time. So it's like nine something here. And this works in my life, to be honest with you, 9.13 p.m. Central Standard Time works in my life. Sometimes I'm not able to get on, but when I am, it is 9.13 p.m. Central Standard Time. So again, thank you for that love. Thank you for coming in. I hope I have some praying people on this page with me today. And the reason why I say that is because this is filled with the word of God. It is filled from my heart. I do business and I do life. And so I try to interact both of them together because I am nothing without mm -hmm. God. And when I say I am nothing without God, my purpose is in God. And that is to deliver the message that he sends to me. Yes, you do. You love the title. Praise God, Amber. Yes, 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 yes. And that's a good title. But see, are you, is God ignoring you or are you ignoring him? Is one or the other. And, and I'm going to explain that in detail with the concepts that I'm going to share with you. I have five things to share with you. And in those concepts, I'm going to share with you why your prayers may not be answered. I did a, a video on that a couple of weeks ago, and I was talking about people are saying their prayers are not being answered. I mean, we got to be real. You got to learn how to talk to God. And when you're talking to God, you have to understand that he is listening to you. And if you're not listening to him, you're not going to hear him speaking to you. And so that's the reality of it. And I think in everything you do, if you incorporate your faith in there, you will find that the manifestations that you need in your life will be delivered. 
You just got to be faithful. You got to be true to his word. You cannot sidestep or, you know, try to go over and get over and get under and all of that. This is for you. Yes, ma'am. You're having trouble hearing him. Well, I'm going to share with you five things today that if you're having trouble hearing from the word of God, then prayerfully these things that I'm sharing with you will help enlighten you and help you hear him when he's speaking to you. Because I promise you, if you are a child of God, he is speaking to you. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. So, hey, hey, how you doing, Monet? What's going on, Miss Hogan? What's going on? You over here, over here. Thank you so much. I'm doing two streams today. So, thank you so much for checking in here on Facebook. So, today we're going to talk about why and how God is, if he is ignoring us or are you ignoring him. The first thing that I always like to share with people is that when you're talking about the purpose, your purpose that you live in, and we're talking about faith, I am clearly a faith driven person, you know, but to have faith and live in faith are two different things. You know, I, I speak to Christians on a regular basis. I work with Christians on a regular basis in my consulting practice, in my businesses. And when people all the time tell me they have faith, you know, saying you have faith and really living in your faith are two different things. So living in your faith is that you know that if you step out on that, that ledge, that God is going to catch you if you fall, all right? But saying you have faith sitting around waiting for things to happen, that's not faith because the word of God says faith without action is dead, okay? Faith without action is dead. So if you, amen on that. So if you do not have that faith and you're not tying them both together, they're not having that synergistic effect. Because faith and works go together. So when that synergism help, when it interacts with one another, that's when things happen. And God expects you to have faith. He tells you to have faith in his word. But yet we walk around faithless. And so what do I mean when I say faithless? Again, you talk about the faith, but you don't act it out in your life. You know, things are scary. Success is scary. Life is scary in general, especially with all the things that are going on. Okay. Why do God have a son? Okay, when you, you got to listen to what I'm speaking here first, okay? Before you interject with questions, I would really appreciate that. Thank you so much. And so when we're talking about the faith and stepping out on it, we need to be prepared for the reaction of God. I say all the time in my broadcast, we have to really understand that when we're talking to him, his ears are always open, not like man. Amen. Exactly. Not like man where men sometimes have the opposition of closing their ears. God's ears are always open as long as we remain a steward of him. And even if you don't, because even if you fall short, God still delivers at some capacity in your life. If you are better off than you were yesterday, I'm telling you, God is still delivered in your life. We may not have everything that we want because I surely don't have everything I want. All right. But I know he's giving me everything that I need. And so that faith, when you know that there is something that is deep down inside of you, something deep down inside of you that you've been trying to do, but you just have not done it. Why? Why haven't you? You're not listening to God. You're not listening to God if you're not stepping out on that faith. You say you have faith, and this is always to my Christian people. You know, I'm not a religious person, but I'm extremely spiritual because, see, I listen to God and I hear what he tells me when he tells me to what the things that I need to do and how I know I listen to him because when I step out on that faith, he blesses me in accordance. And I'm telling you, a lot of times life just does that to you. You don't know when to move, but if you listen to the word of God, you will know when to move. His direction is not bleak, okay? His direction, yes, it will move you, lead you, and guide you everywhere in your life. But you have to take time to sit yourself down and listen to him. But then talk to him. See, a lot of times we only talk to God when we want things. We only talk to God when we want things. And, and you can't do that. Because see, God is not a sometimey God. He's an all the time God, a right on time God. When you need me, God, that's who he is. Okay. And so if you are not literally paying attention to his signs, you know, then you will miss his conversation. His signs are prevalent in our life every day. Some of us second guess ourselves. And when you begin to second guess yourself, that is an intuitive spirit that is within you that God is talking to you, but you're second guessing his will and desire in your life. I know I do it often. You know, I'm not obsolete to this of ignoring God. And am I ignoring him or is he ignoring me? You second guess yourself so much. You can't do that. 
You can't do that. Now, if God gives us discernment, if you are a child of him, he gives you discernment. And in that discernment, you know what's right and what's wrong. In that discernment, you know what's right and what's wrong. So if he is speaking to you and you know this is something that you need to do, you know this is something that I rebuke the enemy today to come in this room. I literally do, okay? I literally rebuke the enemy. If you do not believe in what I'm saying, then you don't have to stay here, okay? You literally don't have to stay here. This is a free platform. You can go wherever you like to because this is today. This message is for the word of God and believers. If you would like to listen to learn how perhaps maybe you can believe in the word of God, you know, stay around, but don't be sitting up there putting that stuff up here, please, okay? Because I will block you real quick, all right? So that's another thing, discernment. See, you can test when evil spirits are around you. You can test when there are evil spirits around you. I apologize on Facebook here. Sometimes evil spirits come to steer you in an opposite direction. You cannot let that stop you or uh, prohibit your progress. Again, that goes back to that faith. If you speak about it, you need to be about it. If you speak about it, you need to be about it. Okay. And so that's the first thing that I want to share with you. If God, if you feel like God is ignoring you, or perhaps maybe you're ignoring him because you're not stepping out on that faith. You're not living a faithful life. You say you do, but your actions speak louder than words. Actions speak louder than words. You're not moving in the walk of God, in the path of God. And the only way that you'll hear him is if you start doing what he's telling you to do. That's number one. The next thing that I want you to be mindful of, and I kind of just shared on this a little bit too. Uh, when was the last time you gave thanks just for the simple things in life? When was the last time you gave thanks for the simple things in life? You know, we wake up every day and as soon as I, I promise you, as soon as my feet hit the ground, I stump on the devil and I said, thank you, Lord, for this day and this opportunity, because I promise you somebody didn't get it. And if you are not thankful for this day, he literally will take this day away from you. And every day he gives us a day to be greater in ourselves through him. Each and every day he gives us the opportunity to be greater in ourselves through him. How do we do that? Amen. We go out and be the best that we can possibly be. We go out and be the best that we possibly can be. That means having a kind heart, tender spirit. You know, I know evil comes against us every day, but God says, have a tender spirit. He it will fight your battles. A lot of times we go out fighting our own battles. And when you start fighting battles for God, why do you need him? Why do you need him? You're not submissive to him and his word. And you have to be submissive to him and his word in order to hear him. So perhaps if he's ignoring you, you haven't given him the gratitude that he deserves by saying thank you. You know, it may not be what you want it to be, but thank you. Because in gratitude, it shows up in your attitude. And when God sees you have a great attitude about him, his blessings and what he's doing, guess what he does? He blesses you more. He blesses you more. It's proven. It's proven. You know, I'm a testimony of that. I'm a testimony of that. So... You know, we have to understand that we must be grateful and in that gratitude, thanking God every day for a new opportunity. If you're going to a job you don't like, thank him for that job. Because guess what? You couldn't have one. You might not have one. And Lord knows most people need their jobs. You may need that job. So even if you don't like it, thank God anyway. Hello, how are you? Thank God anyway for it. Because see, in the midst of you praying, in the midst of you being thankful, yes, yes, your testimony as well, Miss Collins, Monet Hogan, thank you so much. I know I've been there. In the middle of that, you always complain about your job. You better stop that. Stop complaining about your job because you're blessed to have one. It may not be the job you want. It may be driving you crazy right now, but in the midst of it, thank God for it. And in the midst of that, start looking for another one, okay? Start praying for the job that you want. That's right. Start praying for the opportunity that you want. If you, whatever you want in life, ask God for it. That's probably why he's ignoring you too. You're not grateful for what you have. Bless him for your job. Bless God for your job. 
Thank you, Lord, for this job that I have. You know what it's doing to me. It's tearing down my health. It's stressing me out. It's not giving me the time that I need to be with my family, my children, you know, my parents or whatever it is. Lord, you know my needs. You know my needs, Lord. So since you know my needs, I know that you're going to supply them. All right. We have to have conversation with God, just like we're talking to him right now because he's everywhere. Omnipresent. Amen. In the name of Jesus, he's omnipresent. OK. Hmm. Oh, yes, Lord. So being that he's omnipresent, no matter where you are, you don't have to be behind four walls to thank God. Wherever you are, you can thank him in the midst of it. In the midst of it all, you can thank him. Thank him while you at that job, while stress is happening. Thank him. Only God can judge you. You're right. Only God can judge you. When man begins to judge you, you need to walk away. Because see, man don't have the credentials to judge you. Only the most high who sits high and looks low have those credentials to judge you. And so with that being said, if you are in that position, be thankful in that position. But in the process, start doing what you need to do. Because that's my first point. Faith. Are you moving, not moving because you're faithless? See, being faithless, you can't go nowhere, but you say you got faith. You're going to work with the kids, so I'm always stressed out, but he give it to me, so I'm going to start thanking him for it anyway. Yes, please start thanking him for it anyway. Please start thanking him for it because just because you're not happy there don't mean you can't be thankful because you could not have one. And just imagine what your life would be if you did not have that job, okay? I've been jobless. <laughs> it was not a great feeling because I like nice things. I like to eat, shop, and travel, and I got two kids. And they're the same way. And then I got a big husband that eats and do the same thing I do. And so he needed the same thing I did. So he had to, I had to show them my strength because I didn't want them. I wanted them to see the strength in me. I didn't want nobody else to show it to them because see, they get out on the street, kids, anybody, right? You want to be the strength of your family. See, we as women, we go through so much because we try to hold it down. Sometimes we have to go to somebody. Sometimes we have to go to people and talk to them because we as women hold everything down from parents. You know, my parents are getting elderly. So I'm like having to be there when they call, beck and call. I got to go. Why? Because they were there for me when I was born. So I, I better be there. Okay. And we're going through that cycle again. You know, they were there when I was born. Now that they're getting in their older age, you got to be there as well. You got kids. People look to you. We as women have to sit down and talk with God. And share with him all of our concerns and our frustration. Man may not understand, but God does. And in the midst of him understanding, he will prepare the room for you. He will prepare opportunity for you. He will take away all of the fears, the struggles, the hardships, and anything else that's weighing you down and burdening you down. You have to understand that and recognize that. Man can't do that for you. Your parents can't do that for you. All they were sent here to do was be a shepherd over us. But the Most High knows how many hairs we have on our head. The Most High knows when we're going through some things. But we have to be diligent. Good evening. Hey, how you doing? Hey, Lady Ward. What's going on? Welcome. Thank you so much for being here. We have to be diligent disciples of Christ to be able to go to him as humble as we possibly can and have real conversations with him. You like that motivation? Good. Inspiration, motivation. Yes. You have to talk to him. See, and I've gotten so good at conversating with, with God. I talk to him just like, I, daddy, look, look, daddy, you know, you know, this bill do daddy. All right. You know, this bill, you said, ask and I shall receive, ask and I shall receive. But he also says that faith without action is dead. So I can ask all day long, but if I haven't done what's needed, went to work, go get me some more clients, do whatever I need to do, then I shouldn't expect to receive it. You got to be thankful in the midst of it. That's why it's important. I, I live on meditation of quotes and scriptures. I have to speak those every day because life gets hard. Life gets hard, especially with all the stress. You're always worrying because you never know what's going on today in the midst of craziness. You got to start speaking over yourself. You got to start proclaiming that it is my time. And in my time, I know God is going to deliver as long as I do what I need to do. And I'm going to be a good steward of him. What he's blessed me with, I have to be a good steward over it. How do you expect God to bless you with another opportunity, another job, if you're not a good steward over what you already have? How can you ask God to give you a bigger house, more income, a spouse or anything, if you're not content in, spread, in taking care of what you have? All right. 
We got to start somewhere and starting somewhere is being subjective instead of objective as to where we want to go in our life. Amen. You cannot ask for God what you cannot take care of right now. I hear people all the time. I need more money. Well, evidently you're doing something wrong with your money right now. Because see, God will bless you when you learn how to take care of what you got. I had to explain that to my youngest the other day. You know, my youngest boy, he's a shopaholic. He a model. The dude, he loves shopping. I, I said, baby, you tell me you're going to be a millionaire and you'll be a millionaire, but you can't keep $5 in your account. I got to keep putting money in your account because you out shopping. I had to take his credit card from him because he was not a good steward over it. He was not a good steward over Miss Hogan. Uh-uh, he wasn't a good steward. He helping me. He making me pay more bills, <laughs> and I'm trying to become bill less. And every time I turn around, he spend, he's shopping, you know. And, and that's an addiction. But he liked to look good on the court and everything else. So we have to become good stewards. And I had to break this down to him as well. I said, if you want to be a millionaire, you got to learn how to appreciate the the cents you have right now, the dollars you got to have right now, because God is not gonna give you what you can't take care of the things you already got. Amen. In the name of Jesus. So be thankful. For that job you don't like. Be thankful for your situation you're in. In the midst of it, pray about it. Speak over yourself, your life, your situation. And then go out there and do what you need to do on that faith to make it happen so God can bless you with it. Number three, are you living in your purpose? See, I say this all the time. God gave all of us purpose when we were born. Yes, you laughing at me, Miss Hogan. God gave us all a purpose when we were born. Some of us don't know our purpose because we have not met it yet. How do you meet your purpose? When you find your purpose, you literally will feel so, so good in it. Just like I like to place it like with a relationship. When you meet the man of your dreams, you feel good in it. When you're in a house worshiping God, you feel good in it. When you're driving that nice new car you like, you feel good in it. When you're doing something you really enjoy, you feel good in it. Purpose. What is purpose? God gave each and every one of us one. How do you find that purpose? Start seeking it out because it's there. Whatever you're passionate about, whatever sets your soul on fire, whatever you think about every day, all the time, and you can't get it off your mind, that might be your purpose. That might be your purpose. See, when you understand your purpose, then you can start identifying the why. See, when I wake up every day, my why, it used to be all about me. It used to be all about me. Then I had two kids. And when I had those two kids, I learned that it wasn't about me anymore. Because see, they were, hey, how you doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome. They were my legacy. They are my legacy. They are my destiny because I ain't going to be here forever. And I want to make sure that when Michelle is no longer here, that my Womack boys and their descendants of them will have creation of something. I don't want them to struggle. You know, parents don't never want their kids to struggle like they did. Not that I had a bad life, but heck, I've been through some trenches. <laughs> well, I wasn't able to pay this or pay that. And, and that wasn't a comfortable situation. And, and I felt bad, but my kids always had. They never knew that. They never knew when the lights was cut off one day that mom and dad didn't have no money. They didn't know that when mom and dad were starving and they were eating. They didn't know. Testimony. Yes, Lord, been there, done that. Don't want to go back. Okay? I, had, I put a quote out the other day. Somebody asked me, you do everything. What don't you do? I said, I don't do broke. I don't do broke. Why? Because I've been there and I did not like that. Even with initials behind my name, even with degrees behind your name, people still be broke every day, every day. Because you, you hear me say this all the time. A job is just over broke. A lot of times that job is not paying you what you need to live. It's paying you just enough for you to keep coming back every day. That's what it's doing. It's paying you every day. Yes, yes, Miss Hogan. It's paying you every day just to keep coming back. You don't feel good about doing you know, what you own. I didn't hear that. Let me see that again. I didn't see you put that up there. I apologize. That's basically all the job is. And, and I'm not telling nobody to quit their job. Please do not quit your job, okay? Please do not quit your job until you can triple your income, all right? Keep that job. That's a stream of income too. I tell people that all the time. But you got to understand God needs more from you. And in that more, you have to find the why of the purpose that he gave for you. It may not be meant for you to stay where you are. 
And if you're not growing, you're dying. Literally, if you're not growing, you're dying. You're going to grow away from people. You're going to grow away from things. All of that. And that's a part of development. That's a part of the why. Is God ignoring you or are you ignoring him? He speaks to you every day. Are you listening? Learn how to pay attention to God. We pay attention to things that we shouldn't pay attention to, but we don't pay attention to the thing, to the most high, the one who blesses us every day. We have to pay more attention to him. Yes, 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 Miss Hogan. So are you living in your purpose? Are you living in your purpose for you? The purpose that God has given you to bless you, to anoint other people. See, when you are blessed, you're supposed to bless somebody else. As I started my broadcast, I've been extremely blessed and to whom much is given, much is required. And so if you are not doing what God expects you to do, he can't bless you because your expectations are not met. You know, people think, yes, we serve, we serve a wonderful God because he forgives us all the time for everything we do. I'm, Lord, look, don't let me tell my story because he didn't forgave me for some stuff that I'm like, <laughs> you know, because man, man still remember it. Man still remember, but God wrote it off. He forgot about it. All right. And he said, you, my child, you're going to make mistakes. I'm the only perfect one. He says that I'm the only perfect one. So I know you're going to make mistakes. So he wrote my, my inequity, inadequate lifestyle off. He wrote it off. Yes, he did. Yes. But man still remember it. And man wants to remember who you were. Do you hear me? Man wants to remember who you were, but God knows who you are and who are you becoming? That's what God knows. Are you living in your purpose? Are you living in the purpose that God has destined you for? Are you walking where you need to go by doing it by faith and by thanking God for every day? The next thing that I want you to be mindful of is, are you a good taker, a good caretaker of his gifts? You know, God bless us. God gives us gifts. Well, now, you must have been reading my paper. <laughs> God gives us gifts, but it is uh, for him. Yes, God gives us gifts. And in those gifts, you're supposed to unwrap them and share them with the world. Only stingy people. I tell you, stingy people all the time, they, they, they are never blessed. People that give all the time, they're constantly blessed on a regular basis. Now, giving could be anything, your time, you know, monetary, uh, a word of encouragement, you know, telling somebody you love them. People always equate giving to money. Giving is a whole lot more than that. You know, um, my one of my agencies, we go do reading with seniors. I go into the home health aid, uh, home uh, nursing homes, and I sit and read with the seniors. I love senior citizens because I was blessed to have my grannies and my grandpas in, in, into my adult life. So I really respect seniors. So that's part of my giving back in one of my businesses. I go and sit and read to the seniors. You know, and I had somebody come along with me and they told me they were bored. And I said, what? You bored? It was a younger person, you know, and they were like, yeah, this is boring. How do you do this? And I do it like, you know, I try to do it at least twice a month. And um, they told me they were bored. And I said, well, you know, I don't want you in here. You bored reading to these seniors because they need to see life in you. They need to see life when you're reading to them. And they end up leaving. But then they called me back. About two weeks later, they called me back and they said, you know what? That's a good thing you're doing. And I think I want to come back again. Uh-uh. <laughs> no, no, thank you. You know, for the simple reason that you didn't see the life in it, in your purpose at that time in doing it. You know, a lot of times when we're going to do something and if it's not right for you, God will tell you that. That's discernment. Okay. That's discernment. When you're there and you don't feel why you need to be there, that's discernment. Maybe that's not the place or the space for you. And if it's not the place or the space for you, you're doing an injustice to God, the community that you're trying to serve, and you're doing an injustice to yourself. So we have to really recognize is the space that we're in, is it the space we're supposed to be in? Again, it goes back to that discernment. I can't give you discernment. God has to give you discernment. Thank you for sharing, Amber. God has to give that to you. You have to pray that he allows you to have it because see, that is a wisdom of his. That is a wisdom. It's just not for me. Yes, if you don't feel that space right there, because see, I, I can, my discernment has gotten so good in my walk with Christ that I can walk in the space. And my husband, he's like, he'll ask me often. He said, I think you, uh, you, you got, uh, you can read people's mind and stuff. You know, yes, owning what one does shows. Yeah, loving what one does shows. That is so true. My husband told me the other day, he said, you can walk in a place and you can really tell a lot about people. And I, I, I'm not no psychic or anything like that because I don't believe in all that stuff. But the discernment, I can tell spirits 
And, you know, I'll move away from it. And I promise you, you can ask my husband. I'm not sending for y'all. know he'll come through here uh, uh, in a minute. He, well, he, he's somewhere else, but he'll come through. But he said, dang. He said, how do you, how did you read things like that? I don't know. I pray about whenever I walk in someplace, I pray. Yes. I, hey, Pops, what's going on? Yes. I walk in a place. I pray. I pray. I'm like, Lord, um, whatever is going on right now, I know I ain't supposed to be here. And then I find an excuse that I have to leave, you know, because I ain't supposed to be there. And discernment gives that to you, even if it's in a place of work. I was working with a client the other day and I promise you, everybody that was coming in there, they were all screaming and, and yelling. Everybody had a bad attitude and my cheerful self. I was like, hey, how you doing? What's going on? You know, and they were like, I'm fine. You know, and I just went over and whispered one simple word in this lady's ear. And I said, you know what? You smell real good. <laughs> no homo here. But I was like, you know what? You smell real good. She's like, ah this and this some stuff I got at Walgreens. I said, I don't care what it is, but you smell good. Just a nice word. That discernment changed her spirit. She started talking to me and everything. Another instance, I brought somebody some, um, I, every time I come to this client, I ain't bring them no food. You know, some, I work in healthcare too sometimes. So I brought them some food this time. The other times they had nasty attitudes. So I brought them some food this time. Boy, you talking about having a whole conversation. I had to tell them I got to go. Changing people's moods. See, if people expect the same thing from you all the time, they're going to give you the same results. If people expect the same thing from you, they're going to give you the same results. If you want something different in your life, you got to change it up, switch it up, do something different. Otherwise, you're going to get the same results. And I saw that in my own self just by having the discernment for these people. And God will give it to you. And I promise you, y'all got it too. You got it too. You know when a spirit is not good. You know, you, but sometimes we stay around it. Even that man, I had a customer the other day and I very seldom, I, I work in relationship management too. And I speak to people about relationships and stuff like that. A blessing to be a blessing. Yes, pops. And, and I was talking to them about their relationship and they were telling me all the stuff they're doing. Let me tell you, keep your relationship on Facebook. Real talk. They telling everybody what they doing and stuff. And then she goes to tell me that she having problems in her marriage. Well, everybody on Facebook know it. Everybody on Facebook know it. Now, I will post something about me and my family, mostly my kids, but my husband, whatever. But you don't need to be knowing everything me and the hubby doing, okay? And just because you don't see him don't mean he ain't there, <laughs> okay? People put too much information, yes. You know, you got to have discernment because, see, everybody don't want you to be happy. Everybody don't want you to be happy. You don't believe in God. Can I help you? Well, stay around. Connect with me. I'll help you. You know, and I don't like to force my, my faith off on people. I don't like to force that off of you. But the only thing I can tell you, if you are speaking to me today, if God has blessed you to wake up, if you're doing what you love, even if you ain't doing what you love, if you're blessed where you are, then there is a God. There is a God. Yes, 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 yes. I ain't going to go in there because that's not what this message is about today. Okay, talk to me later. Anyway, what I'm saying, discernment. You got to have that discernment. Are you a good caretaker of what God is blessing you with? They are thousands. So thankful I'm thriving without Facebook. I, re I'm not a fa I really don't like Facebook. And I'm going to tell you why. The main reason I don't like it because everybody on my page with probably some people I don't know, but a lot of people I know and in my business, what I do, they ain't my customers. <laughs> no, because some of them don't want you to be successful. I, do you know how many DMs I get on Facebook and on my business pages, everything, everywhere? People asking me to help them because they know me from back in the day and all of that. I see what you're doing. Can you help me? I'm going to send you an invoice. It's as simple as that because this is what I do. This is my life. Just like you get up and go to work every day. I got to pay my bills too. Your mom and dad or oh God. They literally created you. Okay, I don't know uh, what he talking about. Oh, I missed him. I tried to block him in the name of Jesus. <laughs> yes, he said his mom and dad created him. My mom and dad created me too. But God, look, God did it. He put me in the womb, okay? Lord, yeah, shake my head, Amber. What are you talking about? <laughs> Bless God. God formed you in the womb, okay? Amen, in the name of Jesus. But we really, 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 we have to have discernment where we share information, okay? No such thing as a free lunch. Don't block me. You need to hear this. Well, well, don't be putting stuff up like that, okay? You know, and you may be somewhat confused, and I, and I understand that because I, if you don't know who God is, and perhaps maybe you haven't been in a circle of people who have faith, then that's okay. But 
let me just share with you. You were formed in the womb, and I don't want to press nothing on nobody. You believe what you believe, but that's what I believe. I'm not forcing that upon you. Anyway, you know, <laughs> when we're talking about God and we're talking mm -hmm. about manifestations, discernment is the key. You have to understand, know, and recognize. There go my teenagers right now texting me. Understand and recognize every place is not a good place to share information. All right? That discernment. If you know you're not supposed to be there or you being a good caretaker of the blessings that God is blessing you with. Jesus is king to me. Yes, he is. Amen. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. In the name of Jesus. Victory, victory. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And so are you being a caretaker of the blessings from God? And a caretaker are people that are connected to you. I never understood how people love people they never met, but hate the people they live with. Do you hear me? How can you love people you've never met, but hate the people you live with? You wonder if God knew about Facebook when he created the universe? <laughs> Jesus, Lord, 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 Lord. God graces discernment. Yes, he does. Yes, there was a different Facebook when God was around, okay? <laughs> Look at him. Oh, bless God. Anyway, when we're talking about that discernment, the caretaker, you got to be a good caretaker of the things that you have around you, the people that are there with you every day. Love them, appreciate them, because tomorrow is not promised. And God wants you to listen to him if he's ignoring you. You know, people don't call on God until they get sick. People don't call on God until they get broke. People don't call on God until the husband acting up, the kids acting up. Amen, pops. They don't do that. If God is ignoring you because you think he is sometimey God, you got to call on him all the time in goodness and in bad things. You got to call on him. He's waiting to hear from you. He's ready to hear from you right now. He on speed dial on a regular occasion, not just sometimey like people, friends, family. They'll be sometimey. God is all the timey and he's there on speed dial. All you got to do is pick up the phone and call him and he's listening and ready for you to talk to him on a regular basis. So are you a good caretaker of God's gifts, your children, your family, everybody? Share God in everything you do. Amen. You know, Pops, you know I do that. I share God, especially during the bad, especially during the bad. You know what? I'm going to beg to differ on that, especially in the good times. You know, not just the bad times, but I praise God more in the good times. You know why? Because I'm so thankful for those good times. Yes, I am. I'm so, because I know bad times are going to come. But in the good times, I'm thanking him for a while I'm in the midst of the good times. So I beg to differ with that. I'm going to praise him more in the good times because I want more of those good times, okay? Yes, I'm going to praise him more in the good times versus the bad. The bad, I know he's going to come through because he has never failed me. He's never failed. And I promise you, he ain't never failed you either. If you be realistic with yourself, God has never failed you. So in the good time and the bad time, mostly in the good time, when things are going great in my life, like right now, I can't do nothing but praise God because ain't nothing. Family healthy, everybody healthy. We don't have everything we want, but we got way more than enough that we need. Praise God. So I'm praising him high right now in this time of goodness. Everybody is in sync. And if it's not, keep praising him. Because the more you give him praise, lift him up, I will draw all men unto me. That's what he says. And you have to be charismistic of that content. He says, bring them to me. When you share with other people how good God is in your life, he will bless your life even more. That's what I, I tell you all all this time. I've never, I don't have room to hate nobody. Yes, you hear me. You praise him doing bad a lot because I know better times are coming. Yes, 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 yes. Amen. You know, I have no room in my life to hate nobody or dislike anybody or even compete with anybody. Why? Because I know going back to that faith, as I spoke to you earlier, if I do what I need to do, God going to bless me with what I need, especially if I ask for it. If I ask for it, then go do it. He going to bless it. I don't have to worry about that. Yes. Develop the gifts of the spirit with God. Time, space. Yes, pops. Amen. Amen. So are you a good caretaker of his gifts? Please be a good caretaker of his gifts. Then the last thing I want to share with you today, what have you done for him lately? You know, people always want you to do stuff for them. People always want you to do stuff for them. But what have you done for God lately? All right. That's a simple question. And I just really shared that in the last message. Have you shared him with somebody? Have you given to somebody of your time and did not expect anything in return? What have you done for him lately? Okay. He expects you in the image of him to give of you like he would. 
He expects you in the image of him to give of him like he would. All right. We, if you're going to be about God's business, you got to start practicing what he does. And I'm still a work in progress. Yes, I am. I'm still working. Sharing is caring. Yes, pops, it is. <laughs> yes, sharing is caring. Yes, and I'm still a work in progress. And understanding and knowing that you are a work in progress, you're working on yourself daily. And in the midst of you working on yourself daily, you're working in the kingdom too. And how do you work in the kingdom? You get out there and use what you got. Don't be afraid to be who you are. Because see, God made each and every one of us unique. Don't apologize to people for who you are. Only one is perfect. Amen. Don't apologize to people who, who you are. And you know, I'm very honest. I speak what's on my mind. Sometimes I have to apologize in advance to people because I ask you, do you want me to be honest with you? Because I'm going to be, I want you to be honest with me. Remember I shared the other day? I said, lies feel good. The truth hurts. Lies feel good. So when people comfort you with the lie, telling you you look good when you don't, telling you you smell good when you don't, if you ain't got nothing nice to say, don't say it at all. But if you ask me, <laughs> if you ask me, then you want my honest opinion because I'm going to be that way. And I literally have been that way my whole life, but I literally didn't understand who Nichelle was until I got into that 40 stage. When I got into that 40 stage, that's when I walked into my purpose. And when I walked in my purpose, I saw the door open and my why became clear. And that why became so clear that God set me up. He set me up for a comeback. And in that comeback, I became fearless. Okay. I became fearless. And in the fear less, I don't care what people say as long as I'm doing the work of God. And I know that if he give me a stamp of approval and his stamp of approval is that he is blessing me each and every day, not just with material things, but health wise. I'm still in my right mind, activities of my limbs. I can still do the things that I need to do. I got people around me that support me, love me and, and got my back, my front like he does. I can't do nothing but give him praise every day. And I pray that you do as well. We have mm -hmm. to understand and recognize that the most high is the one. The setback is a setup for the comeback and a greater comeback. Yes. Yes, Amber, it is. And I'm telling you, all of us, you guys as well, you, Miss Hogan, we're a testimony mm -hmm. of what's going on in our life. Can God explain poverty? Cancer, birthday says, well, if you read the word of God, you're going to see in there people were sick. Okay, in the word of God, he states that people are sick. People are going to be poor. Nobody, everybody's not going to have the manifestation of God. God everybody's not going to have that. He's giving you blessings of abundance. Now, God offers these things, but a lot of us won't receive it. Just like you won't receive the word of God that I'm telling you right now. A lot of us won't receive it because we're disobedient. And so as long as you stay disobedient in the word of God, what you will find out is a lot of times those prayers will never be answered. God could be better. God could be better. Man could be better too. Man could be better too. And see, when you, when you live in disobedience, disobedience things, those happen. God says these, all the stuff that's going on right now, all you got to do is read in the word of God. He tells you how to manage your money. You know, yes, he tells you uh, that's why you block certain comments. You know, I do too, Amber, but some people need to hear it because they don't understand. They don't want to understand for most part, because if you have an open mind, then you can see and understand reality and understand. Yes, nobody likes bad things happen every day. Bad thing. You need to hear this. OK, OK. Bad things happen every day. That ain't ordained by God. That's not ordained by God, nor is it ordained. It, it, it's a situation. We have to realize everything that's going on in the world right now, in our lives, it's in the word. All you got to do is pick it up. All you got to do is pick it up. And each book explains what's going on. Each book. Bad things test your faith. Amber, yes, ma'am. I love that. Yes, it does. Bad things test your faith. How strong are you? Who are you going to fall to and depend on? Is it going to be God or is it going to be man? And when hardship happens, the first thing I do is get on my knees. And I told you, I thank him in good and in bad, but I mostly thank him in good because I know bad is just around the corner because things happen. Life happens, but I pray it never happens, but you got to be prepared. Yes. And it's a point of life. So if God is ignoring you in the five things that I've shared for you today, I pray that you wrote it down 
or it gave you some type of perspective that you can look and see what can you do in your life to listen to God when he's talking to you. Perhaps maybe it's your time to move. You know, we have to plan. You have to organize and you have to prepare. You have to be ready, willing and able to move when it's time for you to move. And if you're not listening to God, you're not going to have that discernment to have the judgment to do what he needs you to do. Treat others with kindness. That's that's the utmost importance thing. Treat other people. I used to say back in the day, I used to say treat people like you want to be treated. But then I realized that's not a true aspect because some people don't treat themselves good. Don't discriminate. Yes. Some people don't treat themselves good. Some people do damage to them. Some people do some hardship stuff to them. Man is trying to extinguish God more and more. It isn't going to work. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yes. See, man always blames God for things that's going on. It's not God's fault because things not working in your life because he tells you in the word of God. If you read it, he will tell you in the blueprint. That's the blueprint of life. He will tell you what you need to do. Hang out with the homeless and hear their stories. Yes, I've done that. I've, I just Did you just hear me tell y'all go with the senior seniors that don't have families, that don't nobody come see them? And they, they see me coming and they call me, come here, girl. They call me all kinds of different things. I don't know my name because they can't pronounce because I got one of them different names. They, the meek shall inherit the earth. <coughs> Pardon me. Yes, the meek shall inherit the earth. Amen. You know, you have to know whom your blessings flow through. And I'm not, I'm not too proud to sit and, and, and let people know who I serve, who I am, whose I am. I'm not afraid to do those things. And I just said that when I walk into the door of the 40s, that really gave me clarity in my life. Now I'm getting ready to walk into the 50s. Ain't no telling who I'm going to be then. <laughs> Praise God. When I get to them 50s, I ain't, ain't no telling where God going to move me to then. Because look, he brought the boldness out of me. And you just have to be that fearless. You have to be fearless. Yes, yes, I ain't no telling. Look, I'm just praying that wherever he take me to Penny, that, 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 you know, look, that I come through correct. That's it. Because see, that spirit, you know, we got spirits in us. And sometimes those spirits can lead us places that we don't want to go. And that's why you got to stay in prayer. You got to stay in prayer. I mean, I one thing that I constantly do all the time, I'm a good steward over my, my kids. And, you know, and if you're a parent, you understand what I'm saying. Our children are our life. My children are my life. And they, they mean the world to me. I will do literally anything in this world for my children. Praise God. As long as I know that they're my children. I will do anything. I don't care. I will do whatever it takes for my children. So I constantly speak to my boys. I have boys. Yes, yes. And if you have boys, it's hard rearing boys today. Because so much opposition is against them. You know, they're black men. And I'm like, I speak to them. I send them. At 49, you just started a new. That's okay. That's okay, Penny. 49, I'm not there yet. But at 49, that's a good thing. At least you found out sooner versus later. Sooner versus later. That's the sad kicker. When people wait their whole life and they're at a point where they can't do anything no more. They don't identify who they are. You know, it, it takes a long time. You know, for me to take into 40, I thought that was a long time. I thought when I was in college at 20, I knew what I wanted in life. You know, I didn't. It wasn't until I, I was 40, that I turned 40, in my 40s, and each year after that, praise God, that I start really understanding my purpose in life, that God gave me. Everybody got purpose. Young, gifted, and black. Yes, they are. My baby's young, gifted, and black. But I have to keep speaking over them daily. And I speak over all young men that are out here. Because it's hard. It's hard out here for young men. They got so many struggles. It's hard out here, period, for anybody. But when you are a young African, black, brown boy, you know, it's hard out here. So I speak over them every day. And I pray over things that are not even around me. Yes, it is. We have to learn how to pray over those things. I pray over everybody, children, everybody that I'm connected with. Nobody wants to hear anything negative or bad. And so those are my messages for you today. No, I'm not a pastor. Pastor Monique. <laughs> People are always asking me that. And I share this with you all the time. You don't have to be have initials behind your name to be anything you want to be. You know, we live in a day and time. You could be what you want to be nowadays. But all I ask is that you be who God wants you to be. If you're going to be anything, be who God wants you to be. Because in who God wants you to be, you will manifest in your life. You will deliver. Yes, 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 yes. Keep preaching. Okay. <laughs> yes, you will manifest in the blessings of God. And he will deliver favor upon you. You will walk in your destiny. You shall not want nor suffer for anything with the blessings of God surrounded with you in the circle, circumference of his love. You shall never want for anything. You have to understand that he says, never worry about what you're going to eat, what you're going to wear, or where you're going to live. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, that is the truth. That is the truth. And I've been there in that situation 
Not necessarily when I when I thought I was at the point of losing everything, God gave everything back to me trifold. And that's why I know I'm a witness. When it was down to the line, I mean, when it was down to the line, when it was like, look, you got to go. God said, uh-uh, uh-uh, I blessed her with it and she going to keep it. <laughs> you getting to that point? Yes, 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 yes. I'm telling you, I'm coming through for you right now. God will make a way. I am a witness. I, I got so many testimonies and I'm sure I'm not the only one. Greater is God that is in you than he is in the world. Amen, pops. I live on that. That's one of my speeches, uh, one of my... um. My uh, mantras that I say when I get up, God got us all. You just lost it all. Did I see that? If you just lost it all, honey, I'm praying for you. But don't, you know, things, see, we place too much emphasis on things. Yes, things are important. I love things. Things are wonderful. You know, but then we have to really look at the aspect of it. And I think the older I've got, in fact, I know the older I've gotten, things don't matter to me anymore. You know, certain things matter to me, but just material things, they don't matter to me like they used to. Lord, I love nice things. Oh, my God, I do. I love traveling, eating, shopping, doing all that stuff. But when I think about the important things, the people that are around me, my parents, you know, my, my kids, my husband and all those, that's what's important to me now. I could be on a little island just with them. <laughs> yes, the important things in life, your health, because if you don't have your health, you can't get your wealth. If you don't have your health, you can't get your wealth. That's why you need to be careful what you put in this temple, what you put in this temple. And if you're not putting good things in this temple, that temple can destroy itself. Yes, your kids and your mom. Yeah, you know, I could just be on the island with those people. Nobody else but them and, and, and be just as happy as I can be. You know, so the important things, you need to figure out what they are. Pray over things. I'm telling you guys, pray over what you have right now that you want to be better. Because, see, God will make a way. But keep in mind, as I said, if you're not a good steward of what you have right now, how can you ask God to bless you with more if you're not a good steward of what you currently have? So that's my message. I really appreciate everybody coming in, tapping that screen, sharing the love. Miss Hogan, I greatly appreciate you for being here. Thank you so much. To each and every one of you, may God continue to bless you, anoint you, fulfill you, lead you, guide you, direct you in the path that he has for you. Praise God. Thank you for this message. Oh, Miss Hogan, thank you. You, I have my, I'm on Facebook too. I have my son's teacher when he was, you're welcome. Thank you so much for being here. I have my son's teacher here when he was in preschool. Uh, was it kindergarten and preschool if I'm not mistaken and this was his favorite teacher he loved her so much because she pretty <laughs> she pretty still now today but he loved her so much he used to love going to school just to see her yes she true she is truly a blessing yes she has a beautiful mom and a beautiful daughter you should see her daughter just gorgeous okay yes yes yes, yes. he loved her so much Yes, the youngest in the I had both my kids had her, but they loved her so much. Yes, they did, Miss Hogan. They still talk about you today to that pretty lady because I got a picture of them when they were in uh in preschool and in kindergarten. And that was the pretty lady. They ain't like nobody else but her. <laughs> yeah, so you had some you had some going on with my kids, girl. Yes, 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 Lord. So thank you for the love. God bless you guys. May he anoint you, lift you higher in his word, in his image of him. May he give you everything that you need in your life to fulfill you. Wherever there is a weakness, wherever there's a hole, there's a gap in your life. May God fulfill that and anoint that with the blessings of him. The most high. Give him credit for who you are. Give him, give him credit for whose you are. And then continue to pursue the greatness in him. I'm Nichelle with 2XL with Nichelle. You can learn more about me and what I do by checking that link in the bio if you are not connected with me. And I'm also on Instagram, and I'm also on Twitter, at Nichelle Womack. I look forward to connecting with you each and every day very soon. I get on normally on the weekends. Sometimes it just depends on how life is going. But if I don't talk to you again, be blessed and highly favored until next time, which could be Monday. I don't know. Just depends. I got something to do this weekend, so we'll see. We'll see how life goes. You're welcome, Miss Hogan. All right. Don't forget to check the podcast out, too. The People Connect podcast for some great inspiration, motivation, and information to help you change your life. Michelle Womack signing off for now. Until next time, blessings and peace. Appreciate the love. Talk to y'all later. Bye-bye. See you later, Miss Hogan. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you all. Thank you for the love. Thank you, Pastor Monique, Amber. Who else I saw on her pops? And charge it to my mind, not my heart, if I forgot you, if you weren't here. But I know you weren't here. I appreciate that love. Repay viewers, thank you so much. Hearts, hearts, hearts. Love you, love you, love you. I got to go eat my dinner now, okay? Thank you. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.